Hey what's up guys, KSK here, welcome back to another video. In this video, I will show you how to dual boot Ubuntu 22.04 LTS with Windows 11. Now this guide is one of the safest ways to set up a dual boot on any PC or laptop without any data loss. Also at the end of this video, I will show how to remove Ubuntu 22.04 safely from the dual boot if in case you don't like it. So make sure to watch this video till to the end to avoid any confusion. Now keep in mind this method is exclusive to the computers running in UEFI mode. I believe most of the computers running Windows 11 are using UEFI boot. As per my testing, if you follow this video carefully, you will be able to successfully dual boot your PC or laptop with Ubuntu 22.04 LTS. Now to check if your computer or laptop is using which type of boot mode, type msinfo32 inside the run dialog or search bar. Now under the bias mode, it says the status of your computer. In my case, the system is running in UEFI mode with a GPT formatted drive. The prerequisites of this video, you need a computer running Windows 11 or Windows 10. Next, you need an 8 gigs or higher pen drive to create a bootable disk with Ubuntu Linux. Lastly, you need to reserve a free space of 50 GB or higher from your drive. And that being said, moving into a step number one. Now open your favorite browser and go to the official website of Ubuntu Linux and download the latest version. By the time of recording this video, Ubuntu 22.04 is in beta and I'm gonna use the beta version for the sake of this video. In a few days, the stable version will be available on the main download page of Ubuntu. The next stop, head over to the Rufus and download it, which helps in creating a bootable disk with Ubuntu. You can also use Balina Etcher, but I prefer to use Rufus. Now once it's done downloading all of the files, place it somewhere on your computer for easier navigation. To install Ubuntu 22.04 alongside Windows 11, you need to create a free space. To do so, open the search bar and type this command and press the Enter key to open the Disk Manager. A Disk Manager is a place where it shows all of the connected drives to your computer. In my case, I have only one drive connected to my computer. The drive zero is my SSD where Windows 11 is currently installed. I'm going to use my main drive to shrink a free space for Ubuntu. If you notice carefully inside this drive, I have four partitions. The one is named EFI, main C partition, which is where Windows OS is stored. The data partition is where I prefer to store all my data. And the last one is the recovery partition. I'm going to use the main partition to shrink a free space. Now in your case, you can shrink the free space from any partition. Simply select the partition, then right click on it and choose to shrink volume. For Ubuntu, you need at least 50 GB or higher. Now in this case, I'm going to allocate 200 GB for Ubuntu Linux. Now once it's done, you can see unallocated free space, which is where we will be installing Ubuntu in a moment. Now go ahead, connect the pen drive to the PC or laptop and right click on the Rufus and run as administrator. Inside Rufus, choose the drive letter of your pen drive. Now in this case, my drive letter is showing over here and I'm going to leave it as a default. Then under the boot selection, click on the select option to import the ISO image file. Now go ahead and look for the Ubuntu image file from your computer. Here, leave the partition scheme as GPT and the target system as UEFI. Then click on the start button to burn the ISO image into the pen drive. Sit back and relax. The process will take some time depending on the writing speed of your pen drive. Now once it's done, go ahead and restart your computer. While it's restarting, head over to the BIOS and make sure things like Intel Rapid Storage Technology is disabled. Also make sure you have enabled USB boot. Then save the changes.
Now again, while it's restarting, press Escape or F2 or F10 or F12 on your keyboard to launch the boot menu. Now from here, you can select your USB drive. In this case, it is showing my drive as SanDisk. I'm going to choose this option to boot Ubuntu Live Setup. Now when you are inside the live setup of Ubuntu, go ahead and click on install Ubuntu. Now first you need to set up a language, in this case I'm going to use English as a default language, and then click on next. Now for keyboard layout, choose the English United States as a default option. The next up in this section, I would choose the normal installation that installs all of the basic tools. For now, I'm going to check this option which will download all the updates during the installation. Use this option if you have a faster internet connection. Also make sure to take this option to install any third-party media codecs and additional graphic and Wi-Fi drivers. Then click on continue. The next up, it shows the installation screen. Here the first option will install Ubuntu alongside with Windows 11. Now this process will automatically create partitions for Ubuntu. If in case your system is running in legacy boot mode, this option will work better. And the second option helps to completely erase the disk and install a fresh copy of Ubuntu on a brand new drive. So if you are planning to install Ubuntu on a separate drive, you can choose this option. For now, I'm going to choose something else and show you a more advanced way of creating partitions manually for Ubuntu. Now here you can see all the drives connected to your computer. Make sure you have selected the internal drive, which in my case is mounted as dev SDA. Now under this drive, if you notice, these are Windows partition and do not touch any of them, which is going to destroy or damage Windows 11. We're going to use this free space to create three partitions for Ubuntu. To do so, select the free space and click on the plus button. Then allocate the free space for the root partition, which is considered to be as a main system partition, which is where the OS files and software binaries are stored. I'm going to allocate 80 GB for the root. Make sure the mounting point is set to forward slash. And as you can see, we have done creating a root partition. Next up, I'm going to create a partition for the home. To do so, select the free space and allocate the amount of space you need. The home partition is the user space where it stores all pictures, videos, documents, and more. For now, I'm going to allocate a 110 gigabytes for home. And the mounting point is going to be forward slash home. Lastly, we need to create a swap partition. Go ahead, select the free space left and use it as a swap area. Make sure under the file system, instead of XD4, choose the swap area and you don't have to mention any mounting point for the swap. Then click on OK to create a Linux swap partition. Swap memory in Linux is nothing but a virtual memory that works better with hibernation. If your system is running out of physical memory, it's going to use a swap partition to store memory addresses. Right now, we are installing Ubuntu on the computer running in UEFI mode. So by default, it must be having an EFI partition. Now this is where the Windows bootloader is located. And the installer will automatically find this partition and install the grub bootloader. All you have to do is just leave this option as it is. Now click on the install option and accept the changes. Then choose your time zone and create a user account by entering the details. Now sit back and relax. The installation process will take 5 to 20 minutes depending on the writing speeds of your drive.
Once it's done, go ahead and restart your computer by removing the bootable media. Now, as you can see, this is the Grub bootloader. From here, we can either boot into Ubuntu or Windows 11. For now, let's just boot into Ubuntu. Well, as you can see, Ubuntu 22.04 looks awesome. Everything works like a magic. If you want to know what's new or the top features of Ubuntu 22.04, I will leave a link to the video in the description. Just go ahead and watch it. And that's it, guys. This is how you do a boot Ubuntu 22.04 with Windows 11 safely without any data loss. As a bonus part of this video, if in case you don't like Ubuntu and decided to uninstall it, then reboot your computer to Windows 11. Now open Disk Manager by typing this command inside the command prompt or search box. Here we can see next to the main, Ubuntu partitions are located. Just go ahead and delete all these partitions. Remove each partition one by one carefully. Just right click on the partition and choose to remove it. You can use this free space in a Windows OS by using an extended volume option. Lastly, we need to do one more important step to remove the grub bootloader from the EFI partition. For that, we need to take help from the command prompt. Just go ahead and open the command prompt with admin privileges. Inside here, type disk part, then type list disk. As you can see, this is the only main drive which is connected to the computer. We need to select this drive by typing this command. Then type list partition. It's going to show all of the partitions present inside this drive. We need to look for a partition named the system, also known as the EFI partition. In my case, it's the first one. Select this partition by typing this command. Then assign a drive letter to mount this partition. Once the drive letter is assigned to the EFI partition, exit from the disk part. Now type this drive letter with a colon assigned for the EFI partition, which in my case is letter X, and press the return key. Now type cd EFI to change the directory into the EFI partition. Then again type dir to see the contents on this folder. Here you can see both Windows and Ubuntu bootable files. Go ahead and remove the Ubuntu folder by typing this command. This indeed is going to remove all of the grub files related to Ubuntu. That way you won't end up facing any grub issues. Once it's done, now you have successfully removed Ubuntu from the dual boot. Now restart the computer and you can see the system should boot into Windows 11 without any issues. And that's pretty much it. If in case you like this video, hit the thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel and consider clicking the bell button to get notified whenever I post a brand new video. Also, if in case you have any suggestions, post them in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching my video. This has been KSK Royal. I will catch you in my next one. Peace.
I don't really know what comes next I'm just doing my best even though I'm so stressed out Everything just feels like a test that I feel so depressed when I can't seem to get out But something deep